The ongoing saga between Elon and Twitter has brought internet censorship back to the top of mind for many. And so in this video, I want to go into Tor and Snowflake. What are Snowflake proxies? How do they work? And how can you contribute to preserving freedom on the internet? Let's jump in. Welcome back to another video. My name is Ian Major. I'm an entrepreneur, Bitcoin pleb, and all around raging capitalist. And I'm excited to do today's video. Those of you who have been watching this channel for a long time know that while the channel's theme is all things Bitcoin, I will sometimes cover topics that are tangential, yet equally critical for human freedom. And today's video is no exception. So we're gonna talk about what in the heck is Snowflake? What are Snowflake proxies? How do they work? How do they promote freedom on the internet and promote censorship resistance? So you're not gonna to wanna to miss a thing in today's video. For those returning to the channel, welcome back, my friends, as always, it is great to have you. And for those new to the channel, I welcome you as well. About 80% of you watching right now, in fact, are not currently subscribed. So if you like this content, I invite you to come along for the journey. I cover all manner of Bitcoin related content, including tangential topics around freedom preserving technologies, such as today's session. And so if any of that sounds uh, interesting, I invite you to join. But with all that out of the way, let's jump in to the meat for today. All right, so I'm not gonna do a full dissection of the current situation with Elon and Twitter, but the sort of TLDR as I've seen it unfold is, you know, uh, Elon of course amassed a large position over 9% stake in Twitter and has used that stake as a jumping off point to push for an all out bid to acquire the company and essentially take it private. He's made a variety of posts and tweets about, and he's done polls in fact, you know, suggesting that Twitter is censors certain information, favors certain narratives over uh, over others. And frankly, you know, if any of you have a working operating brain, you have probably noticed this as well. And so there is this tension, right? You know, it's hilarious. Those on, uh, you know, in a certain political group not that long ago said, uh, well, sorry, you know, Twitter's a private company, they can do what they want. And those same folks are now hysterical crying about Elon's potential to take over the company and, you know, enact more freedom of speech. But I think what has been wildly revealing to me is the response, right? So you now have this poison pill package, which is a mechanic that corporate boards use to prevent an activist investor from taking over a company. And if you look at the board's composition of shares, they own almost none of the company. And so you could argue that the board really doesn't reflect the interests of the shareholders. Elon has made an offer that is extremely appealing for existing current shareholders. And so the board, by kind of saying, no, 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 we don't want this, is potentially going against the wishes of the shareholders. I don't know to what extent that is true, but that is one possibility. But I think what's been very revealing is the degree to which we've heard people say the quiet part out loud. You have seen mainstream media outlet after mainstream media outlet essentially come out and say, oh, Elon's just this like crazy dictator type figure who's trying to take over and that's not good for democracy. When in reality, he's just talking about freedom of speech, right? And having all sides, all perspectives be able to freely intermingle on this platform. The fact that you now have Vanguard who has now edged out Elon in terms of the largest shareholder is extremely telling. Vanguard is more or less a government entity at this point, given its size. And so you basically have the powers that be that are scrambling. And we're in many ways seeing that the emperor has no clothes on this issue. Punchline, bottom line, they have abundantly demonstrated that they do not want Elon to do this. They are scared of not being able to force certain narratives that they want promulgated. So this is only a further underscore and emphasis behind the fact that this is a very real thing. And so that's part of the motivation for today. Now, there's a whole spectrum of censorship, right? You know, those of us who live in places like the United States enjoy a very high degree of freedom on the internet, right? Even though, of course, there's censorship on all the social media platforms, it is the case that we enjoy a very high degree of freedom. 
That is not the case for many in the world. So think of all the possible scenarios that range from tracking your your information to serve you up, you know, targeted ads. You know, that's on the more innocent side of the spectrum, all the way to potential whistle whistleblowers on human rights abuses, you know, that governments have enacted who are scared of communicating or doing anything because they know that their activity can be traced, tracked, you know, things like your IP address can reveal information about your geographic location, your browsing history, your identity. So this is a huge problem. And as you've heard me say in prior videos, it's only going to get worse. Governments are in a position where surveillance is going to become a more and more critical tool, especially as discontent among the public rises. And so the question becomes, well, what can we do about this? Uh, tools like VPN, encrypted chat services, all of these are helpful, but it's kind of like a game of cat and mouse. New advances to freedom preserving technologies are met with new advances in squashing those technologies. And so for example, in some countries now, they have the ability to recognize and stop Tor traffic. Enter Snowflake. So what is Snowflake? Snowflake is a WebRTC pluggable transport. So it uses the well-known WebRTC protocol to help disguise Tor traffic. So it makes the traffic appear innocent to a watching or observing entity. And so there are three components to make this happen. First, there are what are called Snowflake proxies, which are essentially volunteers who are using their computer to lay these ephemeral tracks that a censored user can use to access the internet unfettered. That's part one. Part two is of course the censored users themselves who are going to use the Tor browser that has a Snowflake client embedded to connect to these proxies which will mask their traffic and make it so that it doesn't, it, it doesn't look like Tor traffic. And then finally you have what are called brokers which are servers that are going to enable a secure and private rendezvous between the Snowflake client on the censored user side and the Snowflake proxy that's being run by users in uncensored uh, sort of jurisdictions. And so we can pull all that together using this handy diagram, which is found in their documentation. Uh, I will link this in the description down below. I encourage you to check it out. I'm definitely not going uh, you know, super deep into the technical specifications today. Uh, but you can certainly read through this piece. It's a really, really good uh, rundown. But essentially the process starts over on the left-hand side. As I was saying, you have uh, you know, this user in, a, in what they call a filtered region. So this is a region where you know, there is suppression, there's censorship, there is restrictions on being able to access different destinations on the internet. And so that client application within, for example, a web browser is able to use this transport plugin. So that is the Snowflake client. And then what happens is the Snowflake client is interacting with this broker server through a process called domain fronting. And this is part of the big deal and why this is a real advance over prior attempts to create something similar to this. Um, it basically allows what is called network address translation or NAT uh, to happen automatically. Uh, but essentially you have the broker interfacing with that Snowflake client of the user in this kind of restricted region. And then you also have the broker who is messaging a Snowflake proxy. So the broker is basically trying to pair up the Snowflake client and the Snowflake proxy. Once that pairing occurs, communication can happen through WebRTC. And so that Snowflake proxy then acts as essentially a relay to connect the client to uh, freedom or whatever is the destination that they're trying to reach. So pretty cool how this works, how it sort of uses an assortment of open internet protocols combined with these latest technologies that enable the masking of Tor traffic to appear as normal internet traffic. Now with that rundown, I wanna now cover what you can do if you'd like to contribute to this process. So snowflake.torproject.org. I will link this in the description uh, below as well. Uh, but this is kind of the homepage for the effort, if you will. It's got this link to the documentation wiki that I will also link in the description down below, uh, which goes into the kind of technical overview and specs if you are so interested in reviewing. 
Uh, but then ultimately, it's pretty easy to either use Snowflake. So if you are a user who's interested in using Snowflake to escape censorship, um, you should download the Tor browser and then it will give you this ability to specify Snowflake as your client or as your bridge that you're going to use within Tor browser. Um, if you're interested in contributing in terms of the Snowflake proxy and being a volunteer running a proxy, it is extremely easy to do that as well. You can literally install an extension in your Chrome browser or Firefox browser. There's also a command line version, so you have community documentation for running a standalone proxy via the command line. And if you happen to be running a Bitcoin node via uh, something like Umbral, you actually have directly within Umbral's app store this Tor Snow Snowflake proxy. So you can literally just install it and that is it. Your node will help serve as a proxy uh, to help defeat internet censorship. So it is really, really easy to contribute to this process. You may be asking, well, what are the potential ramifications or implications of doing so? Unfortunately, there's really no need to worry, right? Like whatever, what, you know, whatever these individuals are accessing through your proxy, uh, there's no way to kind of tie that to you. Their visible browsing IP address will match their Tor exit node, not yours. So there's really no downside in doing this. It is possible that censoring jurisdictions or entities could potentially blacklist the IP address of your you know, proxy, for example, but that's not impacting you. That's just impacting the censored user's ability to use your proxy in order to access the free and open internet. So there you have it, a couple very easy practical ways to engage with this if you are so inclined. And with all of that, let's go ahead and close today's video out. All right, so there you have it. We talked about the motivation behind this topic. It is very clear that surveillance is going to continue to be an ever bigger part of our modern web experience. And so in this game of cat and mouse, I think privacy and freedom preserving technologies are critical. And today we took a look at Snowflake, which is one of the latest Tor innovations that enables the disguising of Tor traffic from would-be onlookers. And this can be an incredibly empowering. I mean, think if you were in a authoritarian jurisdiction, you know, trying to get uh, the truth out of what was happening and you're simply censored from doing so, right? This set of technologies would allow that information to commun be communicated freely. I'm curious to hear, what are your thoughts? What do you think of Snowflake? Have you used it? Uh, have you used other kind of related technologies? Let me know in the comments down below, but I hope you found this valuable and useful. If you did, you already know what to do. Smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, because I'm definitely gonna cover related topics in the near future. But for now, we'll go ahead and leave this here. As a reminder, my friends, every sat counts. And until next time, I'll see you then. Music